Good night, Calvary Assembly family and friends. I'm glad that you're joining me tonight, praise God. I'm going to begin a series of some uh, messages that are calling people to Jesus who is the Savior. And right away, I want to ask you, would you please appreciate it, like and share the video because we need this message to go out and lots of people need to come in. You have family and friends who need to ask Jesus to be their Savior and their Lord. These are the messages I'd love for you to share with them. All right, so right away, let's go into this one. So this evening, I want to consider the question here, a remarkable question, very significant question, very important question, the question that settles destiny. I want you to look at that tonight. For all of us, Christians, non-Christians around the world, whatever religious background you have, this is the question that will settle your destiny. Matthew chapter 27, verse 22. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. Listen, once a person passes from this life into the next world, the soul will be answerable on two main issues. The first has to do with salvation. Well, the Father is going to ask you, what have you done with my son Jesus? Jesus paid a penalty for our sins. He died on a cross so that by shedding of his blood, our sins can be forgiven. Praise God. And we're going to be asked that question. What have you done with my son? Now, if you get past the first question and you said, well, I've accepted Jesus as my Savior, then you'll move on to the second answerable issue, which is, what have you done with the resources that I have placed in your hands? It's a question of stewardship. And so we'll be, rewards will be given for those who have served the Lord with excellence, sacrificially, very committed, very dedicated, and we have done everything for the expansion of the kingdom of God. Amen. And rewards will be given up. If you fail the first question, what have you done with my son? And you did not accept salvation in Jesus Christ, you don't have to bother about the second issue because you will not be in heaven, my friend. Hell will be your destination. So tonight, I want to look at the first question. What have you done with Jesus? So Pilate asked the question, first of all, what shall I do with Jesus? Now, Jesus was brought before Pilate, accused of blasphemy. The charge was concocted by the Jewish leaders at the time to get rid of this young rabbi who was gaining popularity, and they were on the losing end because he was speaking truth. He was very confrontational with them when it comes to biblical truth, uh, the truth of God's word that they had, and he was showing love to the people, which is the heart of God, and he was loving the people and the people reacting positively to him, so they, they didn't, they will have to get rid of him, but listen, all of it was part of God's plan, hallelujah, I was studying Isaiah chapter 53, remarkable chapter, um, and I was hearing, listen to this, there was a, a Jewish person who presented in their Jewish Bible, read through the chapter 53 of Isaiah, read it to another person, a Jewish person, and said, do you know where that, chap that uh, text is taken from in the Bible? And the person answered and said, yeah, it has to be the New Testament. It's talking about Jesus. And he said, no, it's not in the New Testament. It's in your Jewish Bible. It's Isaiah chapter 53. And the person was stunned and, and very... Uh, 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 it was remarkable to them that it found in the Old Testament and it describes what happened to Jesus. So my friend, Pilate stood be Jesus stood before Pilate coming with this charge. Amen. People were honoring him above the other uh, leaders. They had no real evidence to convict him. It was all part of God's plan for your salvation and mine. Pilate knew that Jesus was innocent. He knew there was no evidence against him according to the charges that were brought against him. And Pilate declared, I find no fault in him. The leaders stirred up the crowd to cry for his crucifixion. And they did. And they, they demanded the release of a murderer by the name of Barabbas. 
Pilate came up with a smart plan and he said, you know what? I don't want to be responsible for this because he knew the guy was innocent. And so you know what? He wanted to deflect the blame somewhere else. So he offered, um, I want to release a prisoner to you uh, according to the tradition. And they cried for the release of Barabbas and crucify Jesus. So now he felt that he was free from it. He didn't make the decision. He let them make the decision. But you know what? He was still the person in charge. He washed his hands in a bowl of water, amen, and saying to them, symbolically, I wash my hands because I'm going to be free of this, uh, this corrupt decision that is being made. My friend, listen. Listen. Soap and water doesn't wash away sin and guilt. Amen. And, and so Pilate did that. Jesus did not resist, although he had the power to crush Pilate and his entire garrison of Roman soldiers. Pilate's life was in Jesus' hands, although he thought Jesus' life was in his hands. Uh, so Pilate had a glorious opportunity in the very presence of the Son of God. He stood there. And this is the Savior of the world. He knew the innocence of Jesus. He could have asked Jesus to save him. Just like Nicodemus came and asked Jesus to save him. Just like the thief on the cross that cried out to Jesus in his dying moments. And he says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Pilate was as close as that. Instead, you know what? He was more concerned about his reputation and his position with Caesar. And so uh, he wanted to retain his high position in government, his social status, and the power that was entrusted to him. Siding with Jesus might have cost him a lot socially and maybe vocationally, but it would earn him eternity with Jesus. He decided on what was most beneficial to him in a temporal world. Amen. And he violated truth and he violated his own conscience and he condemned Jesus. So he asked the question, what shall I do with Jesus? And they cried, crucify him. Historians say that Pilate was eventually relocated by Caesar to Rome and, uh, as an, uh, uh, by Caesar as a result of his poor administrative decisions over a period of time. So there's some unconfirmed uh, traditions that say that Pilate died by committing suicide. But I want to confront you with this question. What will you do with Jesus? Think who Jesus is, my friend. Angels call him the Son of God. Demons call him the Son of God. His disciples, Jewish people, call him the Son of God. The Bible says he's coming back again. And he will call all the dead out of the graves. And they will stand before him at the judgment throne. Amen. Jesus divided time into B.C. and A.D. Or if you prefer B.C.E. and uh, C.E. Each time you write uh, a check or you write the date and you write 2021, you are acknowledging the year of the birth of Jesus Christ. That's how powerful it is. You acknowledge his birth, his death, and his resurrection, even in writing the date. To know him is to have eternal life. To refuse him means eternal damnation. Preachers must be faithful to, to the truth of God's word. Or we shall give an account of our stewardship of the word of life. If we compromise the, for the friendship of people who refuse to humble themselves and live by the word of God, we shall give an account not only for our faithfulness, but for the very lives of those we fail to warn. Christians have innumerable resources available to us to help us to know and live by the truth. We live in modern times, and there are so many books and uh, videos, and there's lots of resources available to us that can help to support our faith, that we can live for Jesus. 
Some people ignore the convictions of the Holy Spirit and live by their own standards. Listen, the Word of God is not like a buffet where you pick out some things that you like and you reject some things that you don't like, whatever is your peculiar taste. The Word of God is not like that. Um, but the Word of God is both comforting to you as well as it is painful because it strengthens as well as it corrects. Hallelujah. This is the word that will judge us. My sinner friend, I urge you to consider Jesus. He paid the penalty for your sins on the cross. And God raised him from the dead because death had no hold on him. For he was pure and sinless. He loves you. You don't have to die in sin and go to a lost eternity. He has prepared a place for you. Amen. You have a home reserved for you in heaven. And here my encouragement to you. Don't leave your comfortable home in heaven empty and spend eternity in a burning hell. What will you do with Jesus? You must decide. I pray that you will ask him to be your savior and follow him. But listen, I want you to consider another question like this. What will you do without Jesus? Pilate washed his hands to signify a, at least externally he was no longer to be responsible for the crucifixion of Jesus. But soap and water doesn't wash away guilt and sin. Once you reject Jesus, you will have no cover for sin. People still trade righteousness and peace with God and eternal life for temporary happiness or for gain. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 12 and 13 tells us this, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Jesus. So here's what the scripture is saying. To be without Christ is to be without God and to be without hope. But Jesus, in Jesus, you who were afar off are now made nigh by the blood of Jesus. You can come near to God because of the shedding of his blood. Listen, in times of distress, pain, grief, affliction, people turn to Jesus for comfort, for strength, for healing, whether they are committed to him or not. It's amazing that people all over they have a death in their family. The first thing they want is sing a song about Jesus. They want a service about Jesus. People get afflicted with sickness. They're in the hospital. They call for prayer. It's all about Jesus. People turn to Jesus all the time. How easily people find his help and support in their time of need. Listen, without Jesus, life would be tough. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. The world is reveling in darkness, rushing towards judgment. If you align yourself with that system, you might enjoy sin for a season, but then be aware you will reap the consequences of sin. James chapter 1, verse 5, verse 15. Here's what it says. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Amen. That's the only thing that will happen to the person who's without Christ. Sin bringeth forth death. And when it talks about death here, it's not mortal death. We all die mortal death. It's talking about eternal death, separation from God for all eternity. Amen. Now, you may be a good person, a kind person, a generous person, a caring person. You're not vile. You're not wicked. You're respectable. Amen. And I know many people like that, and I respect them, and I honor them. Yet, I have to tell you the truth of God's Word. John 3.16 says this. 
It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him will not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. My friend, come to Jesus and receive eternal life. There's another question I want to close this with. Important question for you to consider. What will Jesus do with you? One day, every eye will behold the Lord Jesus Christ. In all his majesty and his glory, the one who died like a lamb for our sins, but he rose again triumphantly the third day. He ascended into the heavens. The angels adore him. He has given all power and authority in heaven and in earth. And one day he's coming back soon. And we're going to see him. Every eye is going to see him. In that day, the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. For some, it is going to be a joyful moment. For others, it will be fearful, but too late to pray. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. Jesus is going to be on that throne. It's, got, it's not going to be any other religious leader, any political leader. It's not going to be anybody else. It's going to be Jesus sitting on that throne. Amen. We, he will pronounce the verdict, which mostly is our own eternal destiny of choice. Amen. What will Jesus do with you, my friend? If you confess him as your Lord and Savior today, he will confess you as his own. You will hear these wonderful words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joys of thy Lord. There are others who will hear the dreadful words spoken to them. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You know, the story was told, I heard it many years ago, but a driver that was passing by a lake and uh, he, as he saw, driving down the road by the lake, he saw a young man in the water that was drowning. And the driver pulled over quickly, threw off his jacket and his shoes, and ran, jumped right into the lake, and saved the young man, brought him out. Not long after that, the same young man was brought to court on a charge of committing a crime. And as he came into the courtroom, he, he saw the judge and he recognized this judge. The judge looked familiar to him. And as he thought about it, he realized, I know this judge. And so when his turn came to speak and respond to the charges, he began to say to the judge, he says, Your Honor, don't you remember me? I'm the young man that you saved when I was drowning in the lake. And the judge, serious as a judge, he said, yes, I remember that. I was your savior then, but today I'm your judge. In other words, that has no influence on how this case is going to turn out. My friend, let me tell you something. Today, Jesus wants to be your savior. One of these days, he's going to be the judge. And if you accept him as your savior today, you will be safe for all eternity. God wants to change your life. God wants to pull you out of wretched of wretched wretched situations god wants to pull you out of darkness and bondage into sin and suffering and corrupt living god wants to change your life my friend i can tell you what he has done for me i was not always a christian but i thank god for the day when jesus came into my life and he changed me hallelujah and now no amount of money can pay me to give up jesus i will not give up jesus I just love the Lord. I want to live for him. I want to encourage you to give your life to Jesus Christ today. The question stands before us. What will you do with Jesus? You can reject him. You can replace him with something else. Or you can receive him as your savior. He wants to be your savior. If you will call upon him. There is no one that has ever lived for Jesus with regrets. But I can tell you there's lots of people who rejected Jesus and they regret it.
Can I lead you in a prayer? I'd like to ask you tonight to consider calling on Jesus and say, Lord, save me. He will turn you around. He will make your life a blessing. And for all eternity, you will be in the presence of the Lord. Would you say this prayer with me? Would you, would you out of a sincere heart, say it unto the Lord? If you mean it in your heart, it will touch his heart. Not just words being spoken, but these next few seconds as you call on him will change your life for the rest of time and for eternity. Say this prayer. Say, dear God in heaven, I thank you that you gave your son to pay the penalty of my sins that I can be forgiven. I'm coming back to you tonight. And I ask you, Lord, please forgive me of all my sins and wash me in the blood of Jesus. You ask what I shall do with Jesus. I want to take him into my life. I invite him to come into my heart, be the Lord of this life, and be my Savior. And I promise you that I will live for you the rest of my days. Thank you for hearing me in Jesus' name. Come on, say amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you tonight, my friend. Hallelujah. Dear Father, I thank you for every precious life tonight, oh God, that's receiving your word and calling upon you, turning from their evil ways, turning from their own ways, turning from that old way of life. I praise you, God. And I pray the Holy Spirit will touch their lives, oh God, and transform them that they would know the experience of being born again and the assurance and the joy of having your salvation and eternal life. Bless them, Lord. I pray that as, Lord, they come unto you, that you will cause them to grow. As long as Jesus tarries, that you can use these lives to reach many other souls for your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad. And I want to encourage you, if you give your life to Jesus Christ, connect with us. We can help you in your walk with God as you grow and develop in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me pray for your needs before, you, before we close out here tonight. Praise God. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, I just pray that you will touch these who have needs tonight, God. Your word says if two shall agree as touching anything on earth, it shall be done for them, O God. Lord, I agree with them tonight because I know the pain. I know the brokenness, the disappointment, Lord. And I know whatever they're going through, God, we agree together that they should be set free in Jesus' name. I believe that when Jesus died on the cross, by his stripes we are healed. This is declared in your word. And I pray that they would be healed tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Minister to their needs, God. Various needs, whatever it is that they would rejoice in the miraculous and give you glory for it. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift the hand and say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining me. God bless you. I want to thank you so much for joining me for Bible study. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, would you like and share? Please share the video with all your family and friends, all right? Lord willing, we'll be back on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. for Bible study. And our Sunday services will be 8 a.m. and 10.15 a.m. Two services every Sunday morning. Amen. You can join us. Go on the church website, calvaryozone.org, and register for these services. We'll continue to have them live stream. And just to remind you that Sister Shanti and I love you. Keep well, keep strong in the Lord. God bless you.